My name's Rob Harris, I'm Operational Canine Specialist and today you're going to see Mark, one of our trainers, working Hetty, Jody, and Willow to detect bowel cancer. Now what that means is when we're in the room there are a number of samples are set out, so in this case there'll be four. Some of those contain normal urine, maybe from someone that's unhealthy but doesn't have bowel cancer and one will contain bowel cancer. So Mark will task the dog down the line and as the dog sniffs down each one of the samples when it comes across the right target, in this case bowel cancer, it will sit down and then Mark uses a device called a clicker which gives an audible signal to the dog to say it's correct, that the behaviour that they've, they've displayed which is a sit is correct and the dog will then come back for a reward. So the project that you'll see him working today on bowel cancer is really, really innovative. So it's the first time canines have been used to show that the odour of bowel cancer is available in a sample of urine. Our clinician, Mr Ian Hunter from Hull University Hospital, was really interested in the work of the dog because he carries out surgery that's organ preservation when he detects bowel cancer. And what that means is he will use something called targeted radiotherapy to try and help the treatment of bowel cancer. But that can, unfortunately, have a, a recurrence rate. So he's interested in whether dogs are able to support in the detection of bowel cancer in that remission stage. Medical Detection Dogs Charity was founded in 2008 and since that time we've worked on all sorts of different diseases. These include bladder cancer, prostate cancer, colorectal cancer as we're talking about today, also things called pseudomonas, malaria and Parkinson's disease. When we're looking for a recruit to become a biodetection dog for the charity, it's really important for us that dog is a problem solver. It really likes to use its brain and it's motivated by toys, food, or by praise by the handler. Because this is a challenging role for the dog. It requires a lot of problem solving skills. We don't know what this odor is. So we are reliant on the dog being able to discriminate between what is a healthy person and what is an unhealthy person initially. But then it has to move into, if I've got a problem with a certain organ like my prostate, there are other conditions that are not cancer the so dog needs to be able to say no that's not the right thing but yes you do have cancer. On average one of our recruits will spend six months to a year training to do this fantastic work and that's because the, the challenge they have in having to use their nose to be able to detect these is, is difficult it's not an easy thing and we have to step through a lot of different procedures to be able to get the dog there so one of the things we have to teach it to do is learn what the clicker is. Good girl. So that clicker is the audible signal the dog is going to hear when it knows it's done something correct. And we start things quite simple, when the dog is sitting, when it's downing, when it recalls. And then we actually progress things to searching for a toy, for instance, and then we may cut that toy up and hide it and make it more difficult to find. And every time the dog is successful, it will hear this audible sound and that will then say to the, to the dog and help the handler know when to actually give the reward. So over a number of years, Medical Detection Dogs has been looking at the way that the dog interacts with the sample. So the stands you'll see working today are a collaboration with the Open University and they are taking readings from the dog of how much it's interested in the sample so they have a pressure sensor on them. Also they're able to measure the length of time the dog stays with that sample so we're able to use that as a signal to let us know how confident the dog is with that one particular sample. What these pieces of machinery do are linked back to a laptop that takes an independent reading. So eventually, over time, we're hoping to develop an AI model that's able to interpret the dog's responses. And in the future, who knows, we might be able to attach that to an automatic rewarder so the dog actually gets its reward from a machine rather than a person.